All right, multiplying rational expressions. So we're going to look at a couple different types of rational expressions. The first one is if we just have one term in the numerator and denominator of each fraction. So something like this. Um, and it's actually, I mean, you already know how to do this, but it's just a little bit more complicated because we now have variables and... Um, yeah, well, I guess just variables, really. But eventually we'll also have you know, two-term factors. So the key with these, I think, is not to multiply, but to first reduce, okay? So if we're looking at a fraction like this, what do you see here that could be reduced already before we even multiply? Five Just shout it out. The n's. The n's and the 5, right? So if I divide this by 5n, I now just have n left. If I divide this by 5n, I now have 2 left. How about in this fraction, what can I reduce? Two. Oh, you no, can n. divide by four. four yeah, four and an n. So if I divide this by four n, I have four n squared. And then if I divide this by four n, I have ten. Am I done reducing? No, because you no, can still reduce, reduce them. Cross or I can or now cross parts. reduce, right? So if I have a two here and a four here, this becomes a one. And this becomes a two. So once I've seen then, all wait, the... You can pull a yeah, you can pull a two out. Also oh, yeah. Out. I can also pull this two out. So now this is a one, yeah. and this is a five. <laughs> and then you get once I've two. seen all the reducing, and it doesn't actually matter if you've seen it all or not, but once you've seen all that you see, then you multiply. So I have n times one n squared, which is n cubed. Which is n cubed. And then I have 1 times 5, which is 5. And then I look again just to make sure, are there any factors in the top that are the same in the bottom that I can cancel? Not unless and there are, which means I did a good job. I got them all, right? But if you didn't get them all, you'd see them now, hopefully, and then you would reduce them. Could you do, like, could you put, like, if n equals 5, Oh, so if we were going to do excluded values for this, oh. what can n not equal? Three. What can n not equal? Zero. We have to look back at our original denominators. Zero. Yeah, equal we can't zero. have a denominator of zero, so n cannot equal. Why don't we equal. have a denominator of zero? Because friends we're not allowed don't let to divide. friends divide by oh. zero. And Bella, I'm yeah. your friend. So. Just think of Sorry. Gary's shirt. <gasps> exactly. Go ahead. Okay, but if it's like n, so you have n over one, and then You can't, so cross multiplying is for proportions. If I had, if I had 5n squared over 10n equals 16n to the third over 40n, then I would cross multiply. But I don't have that. I have, I'm multiplying these. Okay. You can't, you cannot cross multiply here. You can cross reduce, which is what they sometimes call it. Cross multiplying is only for proportions, which is fraction equals fraction. Pretty much you just got to reduce and then multiply. Reduce and then multiply. So let's look at one that's a little bit more complicated. Like I said, one that has a couple of terms. So, actually, yeah. All right. So what if I had something like this? 6n plus 12. First thing I want to say, do not cancel this with this. Why not? Because it's adding. It's, that's one yeah, this is one factor, right? This is our factor. I'd have to cancel the entire thing. I can't cancel part of a factor. Okay? So just a, a reminder that we do not do that. So, yeah, as Didi said, she saw that we could factor this. I like to rewrite them when I factor them. So I would rewrite it as this, 6n plus 2, 3n. And then 
then there's nothing else that I can factor. So I'm just rewriting all the other numerators and denominators. But that was great because I can cross out n plus 2 and n plus 2. You mean like write the n plus two first instead of the six or? No, I mean like like you see that n plus two times six equals that. I mean it's basically the same thing, but just the way that it's been printed out. Um. Yeah. I mean, as long as you have n plus two and six as your factors. I, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, you could think of it. I, I think I see what you're saying, and I actually think it's a really useful. I might be wrong, but I think what Dee Dee's saying is, if I see an n plus 2 here, I'm going to look for it here. Yeah. Right? I'm going to look for n plus 2 because I want to be able to cancel this. So that's actually a really helpful way of doing these, especially when you get into things that would normally use Gary's terrific trick to factor. If you already know or if you can guess one of your factors, excuse me. <coughs> can guess one of your factors, it makes it a lot easier to factor them. Okay, so now we've got 6 over 2n and 5 over 1. Is there anything else I can cancel? Um. I can cancel a 2. So 2 becomes a 3. Now I have 3, 5, and n. I don't see anything else to cancel, so I will just write it out. Which is kind of crazy. I mean, it's kind of crazy that this equals this. Right? But it does. How do we prove to ourselves that they're equal? We could plug in a number, yeah. So if n is, we can't plug in uh, negative 2 because we canceled n over n plus 2. So, like, if n was 1, We'd have 15 over 1, right? What would you have here if n was 1? Uh, 6 plus 18 times 2 is 9. 5 over 3. Is that really 15? Well, eight, uh, yeah, you could, uh, you could you, you have a, a 2 in the 18 and 2, so you could just have 9 and then 9 times. Yeah, there. So, so three times five. Yeah. Three. So it really is the same thing. Which one would you rather do? Plug a one in here or plug a one in here? Plug a one in there and simplify it further. Yeah, and that's partly why this whole thing exists. I was actually looking up applications of this, and one person mentioned like computer programming as an example. You would always want the simplest version of your expression, right? So if I had something like this that could be simplified down to something simpler, so just a fraction with you know, a one-term numerator and a one-term denominator, I would always want to do that because it just makes things a lot faster. All right, let's look at one that's even a little bit more complicated. Last one. I can pull out 9R from like yeah. everything, right? Yeah. So let's do it. So I've got 
Nine R times what up top? Right here. Eight. Yeah, yeah, so okay. Down. Can you? Here, I'll just write what you, what you said, and then we'll fill in the parentheses. step so satisfying when you're like all of this just became that. That's I, it. I think they should just write the problem like that in the first place and just tell you to find. Yeah, and we're not really going to look at like, well, where would something like this come from? I'm not really going to look That's into that. Um, Do you want to get away for it, not go to his house? Like, sit over. I bet you think. All right. House. All right. I think that's good.